Welcome back to another grueling episode of the Radio Shop. On this episode, we're going to take a look at a Philco 461226 radio phonograph. This is the Philco D10 record changer. These can be a little cantankerous, but uh, not bad. I'm sure the crystal cartridge is bad in it. The knobs are in a bag tied to the back of the set. The cabinet is in exquisite shape to be as old as it is. This appears to be the original finish. I don't believe anybody else has refinished it. Yeah, it's, it's an original finish. I can tell by the way, but the cabinet is in good enough shape that we're going to leave it alone. Customer wishes, we're going to leave it alone. So. We'll be diving into this on this episode of the Radio Shop. All right, this is the chassis of the Philco 461226 radio record player from 1946. Kind of dusty. I had to disassemble certain things to get it out of the cabinet. That's the switch for the light when you open the door for the record player. I think it's going to need a new cord. And then this was the cord that went down to the speaker and the speaker plug. So uh, just your typical dusty, dusty, dusty. I'll end up cleaning that off. We're going to look underneath. Pretty much looks somewhat original. There's one Bakelite cap that's across the line over here. I take the shield off to get to the rest of it. Your typical paper caps. There was uh, possibly a tube changed to it. There's two electrolytic capacitors on top. And this tube here says the 6, 6L6, 6K6 says it was weak and that was back in 1955 when somebody put that note on it. So we'll see how weak it actually is. It'll probably work okay. So. We're going to get started here, cleaning it up, and then continue on. And I will take that uh, brace piece off the back there and get to working on the capacitor change. And just as a note, we're having severe weather here where I'm at, so if I lose power and the screen goes dark, you'll know what's going on. Even though this is not live, I'm not going to edit that out. I can hear, hear the wind whooshing outside. We're not under a tornado warning or anything at this moment, but it is coming. A gully washer, it sounds like. <laughs> All 
Okay, one thing I do when I go to work on the radio, turn on a little bit more light here for you, is I make a list of all my wax capacitors in here that are in here. And then I go pull them from my inventory. And then I I do what's called, for every one I do, it's called a shotgun approach where I just shotgun them all. Because I know all these are bad. They're from 1946. They're going to leak. They're not going to work very well. We know the electrolytic up here, up here on top. We know they're going to be dried out. We already know that. So some people will change out the electrolytics and turn the radio on and see if it works. Fine, whatever method is that they want to do, that's fine. Me, I know all these are bad, and I'm going to change them. Some people do one at a time, turn it back on, see if it works, so they don't get lost. I will do one at a time. I won't, I won't cut them all out. I have seen people do that, where they just cut them all out and then go, oh, where do they go? Well, they don't know, because they really shouldn't do that. But I will do them one at a time. But I won't test to see if the radio works in between, because... I know I've replaced that, replaced that. <coughs> Ooh, all that dust, excuse me. I know those are the components I've replaced, and I know where to go to troubleshoot if perhaps it doesn't work. It may not be something I did. Uh, so, my method is always I do a shotgun approach. I'll change out the electrolytics, I'll change out all the waxes, I'll even change this out in here because. It needs to be changed and then I turn it on and see if it blows smoke. Once I get everything changed, that's when I do it. I don't do it one at a time, turn on, see if it works. One at a time, turn on, see if it works. Some people like to do that. That's their choice. That is not mine. Because I know I'm going to end up changing all these anyway. So why would I bother with turning it back on? Some people do it to see if they've screwed it up. But if half of these are leaking and aren't working correctly anyway, it may not work if I do it one at a time and turn it on in between. So that's just my thoughts.
guys that you put in the seventh, eighth, ninth spot. Here's the 1 0. And Stevenson takes low over the inside corner. 2 0 on Tyler Stevenson. I mean, there, there are players that, that flourish. Uh, so the smoke test was successful. It has very dirty band switch, very dirty tuning, very dirty volume control, very dirty tone control. So we're going to clean some of that up and test again in a bit. But it is picking up. Of course, it doesn't seem to matter where you put Castellanos at this point and whether what the score is or where he's hitting, <laughs> who's on base. <laughs> And now, on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Faraday, it's been three days since the murder of Frank Wilson. Three days, three whole days. And what have you done to catch Wilson's killer? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Where I can sit down. But this is the difference. Okay. We wish you Christmas. We wish. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Say, I've got good news for you. Oh, no, now, don't tell me you found an apartment for me. I have.